Hello, I'm getting ready to hatch some chicks in my cabinet incubator. I have a sportsman model, it's older, and I'm gonna show you the process from start to finish. Today, I have run it for a couple days to make sure that the temperatures is steady 99 and a half, and I'm getting ready to set my eggs. I've been storing them now for just about two weeks altogether. I keep adding to them, but each day, I switch them around so they're tilted in a different direction. So I've been storing them properly around eh, 60 degrees or so. So today I'm gonna put them on trays and get them in. The incubator comes with three different trays that are on automatic turners and it comes with a couple different type of egg holders and I'm gonna show you how both of them work. But this one's a little bigger. I find it to be a little more steady. Larger eggs can go in it and these work just as well for chicken eggs, which is what I'm hatching today. And also, if I run out of room with these, I will just use the cardboard egg carton bottoms, and kind of poke some holes around the egg holder part and put them in as well. So you can fit a lot, a lot of eggs in one of these cabinet incubators. Okay, I have two trays ready to go on one rack, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in, and then I'm gonna fill the rest of my racks in my incubator until I'm out of eggs. And the metal rack slides right into the incubator, slides right into place. I'm going to do that with each rack. I have a little hatching record that I fill out on all of my hatches when I do it. And I will put down who the parents are, what kind it is. This is just mixed eggs from my flock. I've got 51 that I'm setting. And when I'm candling, I'll keep a record up here at the top of, of how they're doing I also have the dates of when I set them, when the, hat, the lockdown will be, and when they'll hatch, so I keep track of that. And I also, in my very sophisticated system, make a little piece of paper that I hang by the trays that have the eggs on them, because sometimes I do more than one set of eggs, so I like to keep track, and that little paper's going to go with them when they go down to the hatch tray as well. I keep track on there, so I have my dates straight. So for now, I'm going to turn on my automatic turner to get those eggs going and I'll be monitoring the temperature but for the most part I want my humidity to be 30% or less during the whole hatch all the way up until the last three days and we're just going to let these eggs cook away. I'll be back maybe in a week or so and we'll candle them and see what's going on. Okay we are 10 days into the incubation process and I'm going to pull my eggs out and candle them. At this point, I can tell which ones are developing and which ones aren't. So I will get rid of the ones that aren't because you do not want an exploding rotten egg in your incubator. To candle, I just go in a very dark room. This is the basement when it's dark outside so no light is coming in. This is the candler that my husband made me. It's very simple. It has an LED light inside with a little hole but it does the job. Um, these are my eggs. So I'm gonna to try to show you here what you can kind of expect to see on day 10 of incubation when they're developing. Okay, here is a little egg, and this is a white egg. So I don't, can you see the movement in there? I can actually watch that little chick hopping around in the egg. So I can see some veining in that egg, which tells me that it's developing along with the movement. So I know that egg is good. I also have many dark eggs here. Get the light on. I've got very dark eggs. I've got some olive eggs, and those are, can be very, very difficult to tell what's going on. So a lot of times with those, all I can see are maybe an air cell in the bottom. So let's look and see if we can see one of those. And if I can see that air cell, I don't know if you can see the air cell. Let me get over there. I can see it, but I don't know if you can see at the very, very bottom, there's a little bit of space in there. So I can see that there is an air cell developing in there, which lets me know that that is probably developing. And I will be able to tell more in my final candle that I'll do before I lock them down three days before they hatch. So I'm going to go through all 51 of my eggs, candling them, and if I see any that are blank, which I will show you, I discard those and only put the ones that I think are developing from the best of my knowledge that I can see. So I'll see if I can find a blank to show you as well. Here is a clear egg. 
you can tell how the whole thing just lights up like a light bulb and I can even see that in a dark egg at this point which is like I said about 10 days in so try not to do it much before that because sometimes it just takes a while to be able to see that development in those veinings unless you have a super super good candler but um, at this point I am fairly confident that that egg is a blank and I will go ahead and get rid of it I don't want it rotting blowing up my incubator or blowing up all over my other eggs so that is a blank and again, you can see that even on the darkest eggs will kind of glow up like that because there's no development going on in that egg. Here's an egg that shows kind of some development that stopped. So for some reason, this egg died. You can see there's almost like a blood ring around it. Sometimes the ring is very distinct. This one just has some discoloration. You can see kind of bloody marks in there, but there's nothing developing in there now. I don't know what happened. But that's another one that I can go ahead and get out of my incubator at this point. Okay, so the next time I'll be back is going to be when I put them into what is called lockdown, which is day 18. And I'm going to do one final candle, and I will move them all into hatching the hatching section, and will up my humidity. But at this point, all I'm going to do on day 10 is turn my turner back on, monitor that it's turning, keep my temperature at 99 degrees, and keep my humidity somewhere around 20%, 20, 25, somewhere around there, and just let those eggs keep on cooking. Okay, we are finally here. We are at day 18 on our incubation here of our eggs. And what I did was I candled them all. So at this point, you are going to be able to see. I'm sorry, I can't show you right now. But you are absolutely going to be able to see mostly dark in these eggs with just the air cell. So anything that still lights up like a light bulb looks clear, those eggs are not good. And especially if you're smelling any kind of a funky smell out of that thing, get it out, because you can always risk exploding the egg. So what you can do, um, a few different things you can do with these eggs, is you can lay them directly on the hatching racks, which I have done with some of mine. You see, I just lay them right on the hatching rack, and I have a bottom tray in my incubator, which is for hatching. And, but these top rows turn, and since I only have one batch in here, I'm also using my top racks to hatch as well. So you can lay them just flat on there, um, on the bottom rack there, and this way I can see them through the window as they're going. I also have these little hatching boxes I made. You'll notice they're just plastic tubs with air holes drilled in them, so you can get good ventilation. But if I'm hatching different kinds of eggs, I put them in here. Like these are all olive eggers that I'm keeping together. And I just put paper towels in the bottom, and this keeps the chicks also contained in there so I can see what hatch, what I have. Um, I can also use this on my top rack so they don't fall off to their death off to the sides. So I got that all set and I'm going to put those in there. Now the big thing is your humidity when you get to the last three days. You don't want these eggs to turn at all. So you get them flat on your, wrap, your mat and um, you want to raise the humidity. And if you've been keeping it around 30% the whole time, now is the time you want to get it up to about 60 or 70 so you don't want water dripping off the door, but you want it to be very humid in there. So it's time to close maybe one of your um, ventilation holes. It's time to bring up that moisture. So what I will do is fill up my whole pan here. But I also, you can use wicking, um, wicking things. You can add sponges in your incubator depending on what you have. You may have a styrofoam. I just use these funky sponges here them wet and I'll stand them upright. Um, I also add a few mason jars of water at the top and that'll usually raise it up sufficiently to keep it going and then once the chicks start hatching it also will raise your humidity a little bit too but you definitely need extra humidity if you have a styrofoam pan, a pan styrofoam hatcher I think there are like water wells in the bottom that you would fill up. Okay finally the biggest thing that you will struggle with, especially if you're new to hatching, is do not open the door. <laughs> From the time you go into what is sometimes referred to as lockdown, you've raised the humidity, you've got your eggs candled, they're all there, you are not going to open up this door until 24 hours after your hatch day. You just leave them in there. 
it's tempting. You see them in there pipping. You want to help them. You want to do all these things. Do not open the door. Just leave it. So that's the big challenge. The next time we see these eggs, we're going to be peeking through, seeing them maybe hatch, and then we're going to be taking them out. Okay, it looks like we've got chicks hatching in there, and I hear lots of peeping, and all my little boxes, I don't think we can see in there, all my little boxes, i got little chicks popping around, but I still have some that are hatching. So I'm not going to take them out, today's hatch day, but I'm going to wait at least until tomorrow morning, the morning after hatch day, if it looks like they're all pretty much done hatching, to take them out. So I'll see you in the morning. And today is the morning after my hatch day. It looks like everybody is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these chicks out and putting them into the brooder. So it's been, this would actually be day 22. So we've had a successful hatch it looks like. I can't wait to see who all is in there. Thanks for watching. At the end of my hatches, I like to take any of the eggs that didn't hatch and I will go ahead and recandle them. Many times I'll also just leave them in there, um, maybe for another day. Sometimes you can have late hatches, but it's pretty rare. And then after the end of, say, another day or two, I will pull them out and recandle them so that I can learn maybe what I missed the first time as to why they didn't hatch, or um, you can even open them up and see what you're finding in there because there are a lot of nutritional problems or just temperature incubator issues that can keep an egg from hatching. So there's a lot you can learn from your unhatched eggs as well. So thank you so much for watching. And um, don't forget to subscribe to us so you don't miss any of our videos. Have a great day. Thanks.